Anyway, we're in leadership lessons, leadership lessons, amen? We're in leadership lessons. Um, today we're going to talk about leadership growth. We're going to talk about how to increase our capacity to lead. And the thing about increase your capacity to lead is when you increase your capacity to lead, you also increase your capacity to succeed. Leadership, <laughs> can I tell you something? Leadership wins championships. Again, Michael Jordan won because he learned how to submit to the leadership of Phil Jackson, but he also learned how to lead. Also, leadership increases your ability to, to obtain wealth. We talked about this last week. McDonald's started McDonald's, right? But Ray Kroc took it to another level. Why? Leadership. Moses got the people out of Egypt. Why? Leadership. Joshua led them. Why? Leadership. David took the kingdom to the next level. Why? Leadership. So anyway, we're going to increase our capacity to lead. Number one, number one, you got to learn how to grow your pain capacity. Woo, you heard that? You got to learn how to grow your pain capacity. You will only grow to the threshold of pain you can handle. You, you hear me? If you can't handle the pain, that's why they say this. They say this. They say, what? If you can't stand the heat, get out what? They say get out of the kitchen, right? Right? No pain, no what? No gain. Because it has to hurt. The biggest factor is the threshold of pain you can handle. See, God gave you a target to hit, right? He gave you a target. He gave you a goal. But you know what eventually happens when you start reaching your targets and goals? <laughs> you become the target. Because haters going to hate, right? They're going to come at you because when you begin to get elevated in anything, you don't have to be the pastor. You can be a deacon now and you as a lay member. You can become uh, uh, the manager of McDonald's. Now you ain't got to flip the fries no more. Maybe you got promoted from flipping the fries to, 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 to the cash register. People get upset when there's any progress, so you got to learn how to handle the pain, right? Can I tell you something? Do, do, can I tell you something? Let, let me just tell you this first. first. First of all, growth equals change, right? Growth equals change. In order to grow, you got to do what? Change. You can't grow without changing, right? Change equals loss. So when you change, you're going to lose something. Some stuff you lost, you didn't want to, come on, some changes you made, you didn't want to lose, right? So when you change, you got to lose something. And you know, when you lose something, what happens? Pain. So growth equals change, change equals loss, loss equals pain. So what does growth equal? Pain. That's my little equation. Because when you grow, it's going to hurt. Remember that show they called it what? Growing pain. Look, y'all already knew what I was saying. Growing pain because it hurts. Sometimes little kids be hurting, don't even know why they're hurting. It's because the pain, they're growing and their body is changing so rapidly, it causes pain. Look, can I tell you something? Can I tell y'all a secret? Can I talk to some pastors out here? I know some pastors not out here, but they're looking at it online. And they told me they look at it. They, I found out today a lot of people watch me. And I, I didn't know watch me. I guess they don't be online because I don't see you on Facebook. But, but y'all do know Satan tithes. You know that? Satan tithes consistently. Can I talk to you? If you got 100 members, 10 of them crazy. Y'all yeah, don't want to hear that though, right? If you got a thousand member, a hundred crazy, I'm telling you that right now. So if you want your business to grow, if you want your church to grow, if you want your organization to grow, you got to learn how to handle pain because I'm telling you, the more successful you are, the more Satan is gunning for you. And if you can't handle the pain, you can't get blessed. What does he say? I will give you a hundredfold in this lifetime with what? 
Persecutions. You will get persecution. What did he say? He prepared a table for you. He said he prepares a table for you in the presence of what? Your enemies. But stop whining. Stop running from the pain. Stop medicating the pain. You know how we medicate the pain? We'll stop doing stuff. If something seems too hard, we won't even work at it. If we don't feel like we can do it, we just don't try. Stop medicating the pain. You will medicate the pain by putting flunkies around you. It's always telling you what you want to hear. Girl, you're doing good. I ain't sold but one cookie all day. Talking about you got a bake shop. <laughs> you ain't sold but one cookie. Girl, you know you're doing good. No, you need people around you that'll tell you the truth. Stop medicating your pain by getting people around you that won't tell you the truth. I'm not talking about people that hate on you. I'm not talking about people that, that always have something negative to say. No, I'm talking about people. You need people around you that can give you constructive criticism. Look here. Look, 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 look. Do you know that if your hand hurts, you need to check it out? Because it means it's probably infected, right? Do you know how, do you, let me see, people with leprosy, they get hurt more by themselves than anybody else. You know why? They can't feel pain. So they'll walk and walk and walk and their ankle will be broken. They'll walk their ankle off because they can't feel the pain. Pain is an indication that something is wrong. Right. And the reason why the pain is there is to make sure you pay attention to it, to change whatever you need to change in your life, to change whatever you need to change in your organization, to change whatever you need to change in your business, to change whatever you need to change in your habits so that you can get rid of the pain so that you can go to the next level. But as long as the pain is there, it's letting you know something's wrong. So don't medicate it. Find out how to get the cure. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you get, if you get a whole bunch of pain in the choir, I'm just messing with y'all. Y'all can sing, so I ain't going to mess with I'm just using it for example. If you got a whole bunch of pain in the choir, you need to get some new singers, right? <laughs> or you need to find something. You need to, if whatever is giving you your pain, you need to replace it. If, if you are, <laughs> can I talk to, anybody got their own business? Can I tell you something? Don't, don't let people tell you that you need to forgive people. When you call, oh, you fired her, you need to forgive her. They ain't got nothing to do with forgiveness. If you're not doing your job, I got to get rid of you. That ain't got nothing to do with forgiveness. It got to do with I'm paying you to do a job that you're not doing. What I want to do, I want to talk to my Christian folk. I want to talk to my church folk. I'm talking to you about church, but I'm talking to you about your businesses because Jesus got upset because he said the people of the world are more shrewd than my people. They handle their business, and I'm tired of it. I need you all to be able to handle your business like everybody else. All right? Number one, you got to be able to handle the pain. Number two, you got to increase your relationship capacity. But I don't like nobody, Pastor. And don't nobody like me. Well, you better learn how to like somebody. In fact, the thing about it is you don't have to like anybody. You just got to love them. You know you can work with people that you don't like. If you mature yourself, truth be told, you got at least one person on your job you don't like. I know you're a Christian. I know you say, but at least one person at your job you don't like. And at least one person there don't like you. But hopefully you're not going to give up your check because y'all don't like each other. Right? So you got to learn how to build your relationship capacity. And you got to be careful of people that always take withdrawals and never give you a deposit. If I keep going to Wells Fargo and take out withdrawal, 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 you know what they're going to do later, Marquise? They're going to take me to jail because if I keep trying to withdraw money and it's gone, that's called a robbery. Some people are robbing you because you continue to let them take, 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 and they never pour anything back into you. But you need to increase your capacity for relationship. But see, there are some takers and there are some givers. Some people give more, some people take more. But if somebody take 100%, you have to stay away from them. Because one can set a thousand flight, right? Two can say 10,000. So if I can just get one more person connected to my vision, that's exponential growth. So why do you keep trying to do stuff by yourself? You are, you are born to lead. 
What did he say? You will be the what and not the tail? The head. I hope you lead it with your head and not your elbow. Huh? Yo, you shall be the head and not the tail. What and not beneath? Above and not beneath. The lender and not the borrower. He's letting you know you are supposed to be the leaders. What I tell you in one of the sermons before, God does not run the world. God runs the church. The church is supposed to run the world. The problem is we don't get on the, on the level that we're supposed to operate on and get close enough to him and glean from him and be able to take the pain. Remember what we said about good times. What we said about good times. Remember the show Good Times? Did they have any good times? Not really. They might have had a spot here and there, but they was teaching you that you really don't learn in the good times. You learn in the times of trial and tribulation. So what I need you to do is this. I need you to get discernment so you can learn how to pick some friends and some partners and some supporters with wisdom. All right? And you got to understand, you might miss a couple of people that's really not on your team because it's going to be a sleeper. You know, when they be teaching people that anti-terrorist stuff, they always teach them, it's always at least one terrorist that's not going to act like the terrorist because they're there to sleep to kind of pick out who's doing what to make sure if everybody get killed, that that person all of a sudden ignite themselves because they don't want you to know. But you always have to look for the sleepers. So one, you got to increase your capacity for pain. Two, you got to increase your capacity uh, to increase your relationship capacity. Number three, all right? And I'm not trying to make you shout. I want you to learn something. Three, build your exposure capacity, which means what? You need to go start seeing something better. How are you going to get a house if you always hanging around people with apartments? Huh? Why? Why? If you want to get out the ghetto... You need to at least drive, get a bus, something, and go to the other side of town, cross the tracks, so you can see something. You got to be able to start controlling what goes in your ear gate and your eye gate, because what goes in your ear gate and your eye gate gets to your heart gate, right? And out of the buttons of the heart, the mouth speaks. But if I keep seeing everything on this low level, I can, if I keep hearing everything on this low level, if I keep being exposed to everything on this low level, the only thing I can speak is what's in my heart, and the only thing that's in my heart is what I've been exposed to. So you got to increase your exposure. Stop hanging around people that think like you all the time. You need to learn how to cross-pollinate. Can I tell you something? If you go to the deep, deep country, I ain't trying to be funny, but like some, you know, eh, it's some weird places, and you know, cousin, then had a baby with cousin. And the cousin created... So that's your cousin and your daughter, <laughs> and that kind of makes special genes, and they don't have this, you know, because the gene pool too close together. You cannot be as creative as God has created you to be if you keep hanging around lawyers and you a lawyer, and that's all you hang around. If you a pastor and all you hang around is pastors, you all got the same thing. You need to learn how to expose yourself to things you have not been exposed to before. You understand? I want you to be able to, to lead. I want you to be able to increase your capacity because the more you increase your capacity to relationships and exposure, the more you can help take the church, take your organization to the next level. Right? Why? Why? Look, can I tell you something too? Uh, can I talk? I'm talking to some pastors and I'm talking to some leaders. Leaders, don't put your new members, deacons, trustees, don't put your new members in the kitchen too early. You know what I'm saying? Don't put them, don't put new people in leadership positions when they first get there. Come on, somebody. Remember, I don't know, because, you know, COVID then went on, and, and people really didn't go over people's houses as much, even in the midst of COVID. At the times, you know, got a little hectic, and people started shooting each other all the time. But, but, but remember back in the day, you know, you, you, you let people, you know, they come through the garage, they go through the kitchen door because you cool with them. Huh? And, and when, you went, when you didn't know people as much, they come to the front door, right? They come to the front door where the living room at. Well, you know, some folks just kept all that plastic on their sofa. Remember that? <laughs> I do. Can't, you can't even sit on that. You slide everywhere like that. <laughs> you got everything in wax paper.
table. Like, can, can you just let the cloth show so I can at least stick on the seat? Y'all remember that? Because <laughs> they didn't want to know because they wanted to make it look good. But that's how you, you should be doing in your organization. You should just take the new people to where all the plastic at. But you keep taking them to the kitchen too early. Y'all seen that show Hell's Kitchen? That's how they look at your church when you take them into leadership too early. I realized when I started talking to people and I got all depressed because I was talking to people about the church and I, was, I realized, you know what, I'm talking to people that's in the kitchen. But some people that ain't in the kitchen, they, they, they think we got it going on. Man, it's so organized. Wow, the way your stuff streams is so amazing. Oh, my God, the graphics look so good. Oh, my God, the way you did it. And in the back of the mind, I'm like, man, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know we ain't on beat. What are you doing? Oh my God, where is this? You know, and you all worried because you in the kitchen. Business people, stop taking people to the kitchen too early. Stop telling about the whole business. People scared of you. I'm talking to the women too. Stop telling that man your whole life on your first date. You didn't scared him away. Yeah, and my other boyfriend, and he did this, and he did that. <sighs> Check, please. <laughs> I'm saying you can't expose people too early. You have to give them time to, to get in the organization and get that footing together. Let them get some precious good memories first and then let them teach Sunday school. You know you can't sin in the Miss Mary the first day. <laughs> I had the best Miss Mary since so she, she can say something. You, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Number four. Number four, I'm going to get out of here. Help me, Lord. But you got to grow people before you expose them to too much. You got to grow them first, all right? Number four, build, build, build the, expose them little by little, but you need to make sure you expose yourself to more and more. Number four, grow your identity capacity. Now, I ain't saying be schizophrenic. But if, I, if you look at my resume, I was, I was a, a, a lifeguard. I had one time worked at Chick-fil-A, one time worked at uh, Winn-Dixie, teaching, exec, uh, assistant principal, principal, pastor. You know, you, you be, I began to evolve. You understand what I'm saying? And your life and your resume will evolve. And do you know there's always going to be a tension between the new you and the old you? Because the new you always trying to do something bigger, but the old you want to stay the same. There's, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm talking about when you're going through your metamorphosis all the time and you grow into a new person, but your old person don't want you to go. And this new person, because you don't recognize who you are, sometimes you're scared of where this new person is taking you because he's taking you or she's taking you in a place way deeper than you used to be. And now you're out here in the deep water where you were chilling the three feet. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, 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 now they got you singing different type songs. You, you, you were just singing praise all the time. Now you're going deeper in worship. Oh, Lord, it, it's stretching me. It's taking me somewhere else. Oh, no. I used to just get up here with a microphone and do this and do that. Now God got me doing it a different way. I'm sitting on a stool and chilling. I don't know what I, what, what, what? God is, is, is evolving you. Oh, I used to do this, and now I was doing real estate, but now I'm over here uh, doing uh, stocks and bonds. I'm, 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 oh, now, now I'm going to the stock market. You understand? Because the old you is always trying to keep the new you from developing. And there's always a constant tug of war between you trying to be something better and the inertia trying to keep you where you are. But when I tell you something, once you start taking that step forward, that's what I love about Maslow. I think it was Maslow. It was one of them jokers. I don't know Newton. Something. I think it's Newton. Well, an object that's in motion tends to stay in motion. And an, option, and an object that's not in motion tends to stay not in motion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 so if you, if you just take one step, you done already built some inertia in your life. And if you start moving forward, it's going to be harder to stop you. Your enemy can stop you because you never been, you ain't been going nowhere. But once you take that first step, that second step, that third step, man, once you four and five steps, it's a wrap. The enemy can't stop you. But you got to stop letting your old you hold your new you back. Stop looking back over your shoulder. 
You got to keep doing it. And can I talk to some pastors and some, and some teachers and some... See, it's, it's about three, four churches in your house. I'm going to say it's at least two churches in the church. It's at least two organizations in your organization. Not just church. I'm going to tell you something. Look, the people that was at the church when it was only 200 members, they look at the pastor like he's a chaplain. They, you know what they want you to do, Rev? They want you to bury the dead, right? They want you to, they want you to, they want you to go visit the sick. They want you to, they want you to marry folk, and they, and they want you to be nice. They don't want you to make no decisions. They got it. Because this, this, this is how we used to do it, Pastor. This is what we want to be. This is how we used to do it. Uh, our brother, uh, sister, CEO, whatever it is you are, it's going to always be a small group that started when the organization was small, and they, they, never, they never grew, with, they never expanded their thoughts. That's why you got to start repositioning people and, and, you, and get them plaques and stuff and move them somewhere else. <laughs> get them some flowers. Oh, girl, you did so good. Oh, yeah, go, go over here, out this door over here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> because you got to continue to reinvent yourself and some people don't like when you reinvent yourself and you already got to struggle enough with yourself. I don't want to struggle with you. I'm already struggling enough trying to change me and you trying to hold me back too. Now I can't do nothing about me. I got to be with me because wherever I go, there I am. But I don't have to take you with me. You feel me? I can leave you behind. I don't have to take you. So when you got those people that just all they see is a chaplain, but then when you get, you got those members that came to you when you had a thousand members. Or came to you when you had, you had a million dollar company. And then they looked at you as the captain. You say, you know what? We're going to go over here and we're going to take this hill. Some of us ain't going to make it. They be like, okay. But your chaplain vote, we might die. Oh, no, nah, Pastor. We, the devil is alive. We're we going to leave that here right over there. <laughs> you, you feel me? Because you got to stop trying, though, to convince folk that they have to change. Just change you. Can I tell you something? Anything that stops changing is dying. Anything that stops changing is dying. Once you stop changing and evolving, you are deteriorating. You are digressing. You are going backwards. You are dying. The minute you stop growing, you are dying. Whatever stops growing is dying. If it ain't growing, it's dying. If it's not changing, it's dying. And people always go crazy because of change, but the only thing that's constant in life is change. All right? All right, look, you got to be comfortable with who you are because as you grow, your identity will continue to change and shift. Remember when Moses, what, how did Moses split the Red Sea? He held his staff out, right? And the, and the Red Sea split. Man, Joshua didn't even have a staff. Girl, I know why they didn't make it to the other side. You know what they were saying? Man, what are you talking about? Man, you know good and well Moses split the Red Sea with his staff. Joshua ain't even got no staff. He can't lead us. Uh-uh. He ain't got no staff. Man, when we went to the Red Sea, we ain't step in that water. We ain't even get our feet wet. They split the Red Sea before we even went over there. And he ain't talking about stepping in the water. Mm -mm, I ain't stepping in the water first. Mm, that ain't the way we used to do it. People that don't have the capacity to change die. They didn't make it to the promised land. You, you feel me? Churches are dying. They are dying at an even a more rapid pace now because they will not shift in COVID. Do you know? Ooh, I hope they ain't listening to me. I'm going to say I am. I am. I'm just trying to say it as nice as I can so I won't offend anybody. I'm, I'm keeping it real, but I'm trying. You know, I've seen Tay Chappelle when keeping it real goes wrong. and <laughs> I don't want it to go wrong, keeping it real. 
this church, and, I, and Smell's looking at me too, but I ain't, I ain't, ain't entertaining because, you know, Smell's and threaten folk before because people that tried to recruit me in front of him when I first got here and people wouldn't treat me right in Newbies Grove. And Deacon Smell was like, are you trying to rec- recruit my pastor in front of me? They're like, man. I, <laughs> but, but anyway, these this people called me because they, they, they was upset at, at, at their pastor, right? And, and, and I listened to them, and, and they was asking me, you know, was I, was I going to apply to go, you know, to Atlanta? And I probably would have if the bush didn't talk. He do it with the bush. The bush told me I couldn't go nowhere. So since the bush talked, you feel me, I, I just had to stay put. So even though the midnight train from Georgia was going to come get me and pay me even a little more, but I didn't entertain it. Though. I listened. I did listen to it, but I didn't. But... <laughs> Because I, I wanted to get them to get to the point. And the problem is, they were fighting with the pastor, and they said, we're going to take all these cameras back because we know he did this and this and this. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's going to take the cameras back. Why? Because he want to do social media. Wanna do, hold on, time out. You mean to tell me you can't even hardly go to church? You got to distance yourself. You can only be at probably a fourth capacity, and you arguing with your pastor about cameras and being on social media? You might well just get a match and light the church on fire. At least you will get insurance check if you don't get caught. You telling me you arguing with a pastor about social media in the midst of COVID? When we don't know with the Delta variant if we can even go back in the building again after September, we don't know what's going on. But you telling me you arguing about whether or not you should be on social media? How is that even a question? But they don't want to change. Even though they have to to survive. They're almost forcing their church into a death because they don't know how to change gears. If you don't know how to change gears, your business going to die. You better learn how to take some online orders. You better learn how to ship some stuff to some people. You better learn how to partner with Amazon or Uber or somebody that can get your stuff or, or FedEx or somebody or put it in the mail. You better stop trying to do stuff the same way you used to. This is a time where those who cannot adapt are going to die. Not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, financially, career-wise, relationship-wise, because they don't know how to change. We're going to have to get an online church more than we got now. Yeah, we was all cute. We do our little graphics there, but we're going to have to get more, more comprehensive with it now if we're going to survive because some people never coming back in the building. Are you going to adapt or are you going to die? I, I got to keep saying, are you going to change or are you going to die? Are you going to evolve or are you going to die? Not just church folk, business folk, universities, colleges. I know you don't want to do online, but you better learn something different. You can't pack everybody indoors all the time now. You better get Zoom or somebody, Google something or whatever when you're trying to have these meetings. Better learn how to keep it more. Anyway, you got to change. What, what time is it? 743? All right, 743, what time? Well, all right. We got to learn how to change. All right? See, the thing about it is, what you got to understand is God's principles never change, but his methods do. He told Moses, strike the rock one time. He told him to speak to the rock the next. He split the Red Sea before they stepped in the water and used a staff. Another man didn't even have a staff, had to step in the water first. His methods change. Some of y'all caught up with how, how come the praise team keeps singing all the time. Where the choir? Where the choir? Do you want COVID? So you want to pack everybody on this stage. And you know half our choir is going to have to hold on somebody to get up here anyhow. They got to touch somebody because they can't walk. Some of them keep it at 100. Yeah. 
You worried about a choir in COVID. We already tiptoeing on the line right now being in here, period. And you fussing about a choir <laughs> on a little stage. It's bigger than the old church, but it's small in COVID. Remember, y'all remember when COVID first came? <laughs> Derek came out here and put all the little squares on the ground. Hold on. <laughs> you stand right here. <laughs> and look, he always be right here in the front. So on the <laughs> I don't want y'all breathing on me. You really be safe in the back, just so you know. I'm just messing with you. Number five. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> so I'm saying all the breath going on. You only saw I was messing with. I'm, just, I'm making you think now. Number five. Number five. Number five. Let me go. I got off task. I, as soon as I see this, 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 this is my magic chair. My chair keeps me in line. Uh oh. My chair keeps me in line. Uh oh. Did I break something? I hope I ain't break. Hello. Hello. All right. I'm still here. <laughs> number five. Grow your crisis capacity. Woo! Y'all bet this right here gonna teach. See, this right here gonna teach. You gotta grow your crisis. Don't waste a good crisis. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When the crisis comes, you can show people who you are. Remember Don uh, uh, Corleone? Don Corleone, but his whole name Corleone, the Godfather. You know, he killed, the gangster was bullying everybody, he killed, and then he became, you know, I'm not a good example for church. Let me think of another one. <laughs> Crisis capacity. David and Goliath, right? <laughs> That's better, right? I'm, yeah. Let me rewind. David and Goliath don't waste a good crisis, Right? Goliath was trying to fight everybody. We just learned that on Sunday, right? He was trying to fight everybody when nobody fight him. David comes, he solves the crisis, and boom. If you a real leader, when a crisis comes, you will welcome it. Some people even create crisis, but don't do that. A crisis is going to come. And when you're in the midst of a crisis, if you can just keep yourself, your head and your, your, your knees on the ground and your head lifted toward the healer would come with your help, God will take you to the next level, Right? Look at the crisis. How much money is Zoom making in a crisis? Netflix. Oh, my God. They took advantage of the crisis. GameStop. You ain't got nothing else to do. Some people that can't even play video games playing video games now. They ain't got nothing to do. Learn how to welcome crisis because he said he prepares a place for you where in the presence of your enemies, which means he prepares a place for you in the midst of a crisis. Do you know who makes money? Problem solvers. I have a problem. I can't sing, so I need to find a praise team. Huh? Whatever somebody Whenever somebody has a problem, if you're the problem solver, you're going to make money. See, look, look, look. There's, you know, I always talk about this, you know, boop, boop, EKG machine, boop, boop, up, down, up, down, up, down. You don't, you don't want it to be all peaks or all valleys because what is a straight line and you dead. Boop. It's the peaks and the valleys. The peaks and the valleys. See, see, stop always looking for peaks all the time. Right? Because the valleys show you and teach you about perseverance. The valleys teach you how to do something with the least amount of resources. Y'all, look, I, we, we, man, we, we do clips and stuff better than we ever did before. Come on, y'all. Remember we just had the phones? Men walk around with the phone on a stick. But first of all, we just had the phone in our hand, right? Then we had the phone on a little stick, right? Then we had to look, the little three stick thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had to try for whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? We had, we had, we, 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 we were doing it. And, 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 and so now we got cameras, we should be even more creative than we ever been. Right? Now, when we was just on the phone, we couldn't be on YouTube and stuff. 
But now we on you. We reaching other people in other countries and everywhere. Why? Because we've increased our capacity. But it was the valid time that showed us how to work with the least amount of resources. So when we got resources, come on, somebody, they found out today, oh, you know what? The cameras up here were clearer than the cameras back there. So what we do, take one real good clear camera, put it over there, take another camera, put it over there, and mix it up. Why? When you don't have something all the time, you got to learn how to mix it up. But some of you all don't, ex I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I want to talk to you for a minute. See, do you know why we grew so fast? Remember, we, they was like, we, we were one of the fastest growing churches on the peninsula, if not the fastest growing church on the peninsula, because everybody was talking about us. People used to be like, man, why you don't get mad when people talk about you? It's free advertising. We ain't had no commercials back then. Somebody be like, Maxwell crazy, let me go see how crazy he is. Oh, he ain't that crazy. He ain't crazy as y'all say he was. And then they go get somebody else. Look, he ain't as crazy. Come on, man. Man, he did say something crazy. Maybe that's why they call him crazy. You understand? Some of you all get mad at your haters talking about you, but that's free advertisement. I, I, I hate to use this for an example. I hate to. But, but, but this leadership lessons, and, and it was rated PG-13. I'm just making it up right now. But remember, NWA, if you don't raise your hand, you're in church. You shouldn't remember. But NWA, people would buy their albums and, and tear them up. Remember, and, and two live crew, they buy their album and tear them up. And that made them some of the top selling artists. Because why, how dumb are you? Why you going to go buy them to tear them up? You making them money. So the thing about it is, when people go badmouth you, they just bring in advertising to you. Remember I told you how I became a principal so quick? I became a principal very young. Why? About, I was like 34, 30, 34, I think 34 years old. Became 34, 30, 34, 35. Became a principal, right? Why? Because I had so many people hating on me. They talk about me, Stephon. He ain't do this right. He ain't do this right. He's spending my child with no reason. And then the assistant superintendent will come down there. Da, 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 da. Give me the paper. I get to it. And it's come back. Da, da, da. Then it got to the point where they, 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 they stopped. They stopped coming down there and started emailing me. Can you just send me this? Can you just send me this? And I'm like, okay, I'll send you that. And, and, and then it got to the point, they just started calling me. Man, somebody else came out here. What happened? It just became, we started being cool. Why? I couldn't be like, hey, hey, Miss Assistant Principal, I'm doing such a good job over here. Ain't that thing? Some of y'all do that, but don't do that. But because my haters kept lying on me, kept saying I was doing something out of compliance, so they coming to investigate me, it put me on their radar. And when I had my stuff together, it got me elevated because people kept bringing attention to me and started realizing that my stuff wasn't wrong, it was right. Stop getting mad at your haters when they hate on you. They're doing their job. They're making you a better person. They're getting the chafe out of you. They're building your character. And you know what else they're doing? They're giving you free advertisement that you don't have to pay for YouTube to boost it. You don't have to promote it on your Instagram because they hate on you over here. The police department, oh, they got so mad at me. Because there's one dude that's always talking about me on social media, and every time we post a video that we did something with the police or the basketball thing, he just started talking about it. And they're like, will you make him stop? Will you take it down? Or will you, no, he said, will you, will you call YouTube and let them know that he don't own this video and he can't share? I'm like, do we know his followers? They were like, no. Is that video we got out there the truth? Yeah. Well, who cares? He exposing us. To somebody we would never get exposed to if he didn't share it. So what he talking about it? It ain't going to change the content of what we put out, right? So no matter what his opinion is, they still see the true content of what we got. Now, if he went and he changed it up and edited it and spliced some voices out, yes, but it's the same. It doesn't matter. If you're doing right, who cares if somebody talking about you? It's free advertisement. Number, number five, number six. Number six, grow your character capacity. The only one who can mess up your name is you. You see what I'm saying? People can lie on you. 
People can do a lot of different things. People can make up stuff, but if your character is true, it might mess you up for a while, but that it, your, 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 your name would be protected. You feel me? God would straighten it out. I promise you that. You got to build your character capacity because God cannot elevate you until, he, until you elevate your character. You feel me? Because remember, God loved you so much that he would not let fruit grow on your vine before it's time. Because he does not want your blessing to destroy you. I believe, I, I know he didn't really learn his lesson, but let me just put God in that uh, anthropomorphic state for a minute. But God learned his lesson when he gave Adam Eve too early. He blamed it on her. Mm -hmm. This girl, mm -hmm. this girl you gave me, God, her fault. You know, you know good and well, ain't, ain't nothing I want to eat. She came. God like, okay, you want to blame it on your blessing. God would not give you a blessing too early. All right, seven. I, this, is, this is a good one right here. <clears throat> Number six, grow your character capacity. But look, seven, grow your risk capacity. Oh, don't nobody want to hear that. Let me sit down so I can be good. Grow your risk capacity. You won't get rich. You won't get paid. You won't walk in wealth. You won't do anything great if you don't take a risk. Conservative people die conservatively bored. You have to take a risk. You know the problem with the middle class, us, most of us middle class folk, rich people already got enough money so they already, they good. Poor people, they gonna take a risk because they ain't got nothing to lose. People in the middle keep getting stuck because they don't take risk. You gotta learn how to take a risk. Launch that business. <clears throat> you know why I started my first well, my first and only, <laughs> well, I started Maxwell Realty in my house. Where my office was, in my driveway. Meet me outside. <laughs> Till I got some stalkers in, I had to go get an office. But yeah, but meet me outside. I'm going to meet, meet me over here by the, by the mail box. <laughs> had, my, had my LLC and everything. What? My office. What? What? Then my office moved away. Starbucks. Before they were profiling Negroes, I go there and meet, you know? <laughs> they don't let you do that no more, I guess. You know, I, you go to Starbucks and I meet in there. Then eventually I got an office, but what? I started small. But you got to take a risk. They said, you know what? I need to get an office so I can attract more people. And once y'all started putting money in it, it started coming back to me. Why? When you start learning how to invest in yourself. I, I know this don't sound like a regular church lesson, but do you, do, you, do you invest in yourself? Do you read a book? Do you buy a book or something? Do you take yourself to seminars? Do you put yourself in a leadership something so you can increase your capacity to learn and take yourself to another level? Do you do that? You got to learn how to risk. When you are 100% certain that you should make a move, it's too late. When you are 100% sure you should move, it's over. Somebody else beat you. You know that, right? The longer it takes you to make up your mind to take the risk, you done missed it. I'm not telling you to jump in on the pyramid scheme, but I'm just saying, if you ain't get there in the beginning, you ain't going to get no money. Just stay out. You got to learn how to take risk. Did David take a risk? Didn't we learn that on Sunday? David couldn't even hold an armor, right? He couldn't even hold an armor. He went out there with a sling, a rag and a rock, literally, to go fight a giant. Is that a risk? <laughs> this joker got an armor bigger than his body, bigger than David. His spear probably longer than David. They said the tip of the spear weighed 15, 20 pounds. His armor weighed 125 pounds. This joker walking around with, with spears, javelins, and shields. He walking around with at least 200 pounds that he, on him and he carrying it. And he out there with no armor, no helmet, no breastplate. Huh? N nothing. But he took the risk. And when he took the risk, he got a great reward. Are you willing to take a risk? Are you willing? Now pray about it, though, because it's a fine line between faith and crazy. But you got to pray about it and make sure God is telling you to take that calculated risk. All right? Now, look, this is what I'm saying. We got to grow our capacity for risk. And last thing we, we learn, hold on.
This is what I need you to do. Even though we here, and I believe we got here, and we got kind of complacent a little bit, but I, I, now we're going to have to take some more risks. Yeah, that means I got to talk to you, Miss Bell. You already know. She, she just moved ahead. She already knew. The spirit done already. <laughs> Flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you, but it was my father. <laughs> Turn it here. Oh, Lord. Pass him on some money. <laughs> oh, God. So you got to continue to grow your capacity to, to, to risk, right? And stop getting to the point where you get to a certain point and you say, I'm good. Why? Because if you're not growing, you are dying. We sitting here and we trying to maintain in COVID-19, but you know what we're doing? We're dying. Yeah, we got the drive-in church. Yeah, we got this. But what are we doing with our online presence? What are we doing? I don't even tell y'all to share the stuff like I said. You, you should, I should always tell you, you know what? Everybody need to follow Newbies Grow. Everybody need to follow. I'm going to tell you now. Everybody need to follow Newbies Grow. Everybody need to be a friend with pastor. Everybody need to do something. And every time he preaches, every time he teaches, every time anybody's up here on stage, anytime we have anything, we need to start resharing it and reposting it because we have to increase our capacity. We have to or we're going to die. We have to. Last thing, last thing is 8 o'clock and I'm on number 8. Prophetic. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have to continue to build your capacity to network. You got to build your capacity to network. You got to learn how to talk to people. Look at Luke 5, 5, 6, and 7. It says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. You got to learn how to pull other people in. Now, we, doing, we usually do all this stuff by ourselves, and we might partner with TBBA, but now we're doing Haiti. You know what? I say, look here, Reverend Hurd, you already know Haiti. You need to come over here. Reverend Tremaine, you already got a network of folk. You know what? Dr. Murphy, we need to do this. We need to pull all these people in. And you know what? Virginia Baptist State Convention, we need you because now it's probably going to cost us more money to get the stuff over there because the president in Haiti has been assassinated. So the president of Haiti has been assassinated. They already tried to steal stuff and we sent it before. You know Marauders going to be there now. So we got to build a bigger network of people to make sure that we can get these supplies to these people safely. Make sure that whoever we find to send the money to, we got to make sure that once we get in touch with them, that, 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 that we have a, a, a safe network of people that can get the resources to where we need it to go. We can't do it by ourselves. When God begins to increase your capacity of what you do, you're going to have harder and tougher situations. You know the only reward when you win a battle is another battle? Don't that irritate you sometimes? Your reward for winning this battle is you get to fight another battle. And so now what we have to do is increase our capacity to network and learn even more how to work and collaborate with each other. The reason why the devil is always trying to sever relationships is because one can set a thousand flight, two can set ten thousand. Mathematically, I don't know what three can do, but if two can do ten thousand, then my goodness, what can three do? What can five do? What can a thousand do? You got to increase your capacity to build relationships and network, but what you got to increase? Your capacity to forgive because somebody going to hurt you in ministry. Somebody going to backstab you. Joseph's own brother sold him into slavery. Jesus was betrayed by his own brethren. Yet he continues to put his name on the line even though he know we're going to mess it up every time because we're going to sin, we're going to fall short, yet he still loves us anyway. If he can become of no reputation for you, then I'm sure you can do the same for him. What is God asking you to do? What is he asking you to risk in order to grow so you can go to the next level so you can help his church? So these are the, those are the eight things that you need to do in order to increase your capacity to lead. I'm sure there's other things we can do, but one of the main things we got to remember is growth is pain. And when you grow, it's going to hurt, 
You're going to become overwhelmed sometimes because you're doing something you haven't done before. When you be expanding your business, it's going to overwhelm you. So you got to learn how to pull somebody else in to help you, to, to help you get where you're going. It's going to hurt. But you got to be able to increase your capacity to be in relationships, to network, to, 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 to do all the different things that God needs you to do. All right? So what we want to do as a church, let me go through this one more time. I'm going to just say them, and then we're going to get out of here. Grow your capacity for pain because you receive a hundredfold in this lifetime with persecutions. Increase your relationship capacity. One can say 1,000 to flight. Two can say 10,000. Three, build your exposure capacity. Stop staying on the west side. Go see what's on the east side. Be like the Jefferson. You want, you to, you want to come up, you got to go see what come up look like. Grow your identity capacity. You got to begin to continue to evolve. Stop letting the old you Pull the new you back into the old you. Grow your Christ capacity. Don't worry about crisis. Your haters are free advertisement. Six, grow your character capacity. Continue to grow your character capacity by staying in your word because if you grow your character, God can trust you with more responsibility. Grow your risk capacity because if you're not on cutting edge, you're not going to go to the next level. And number eight, you have to continue to build your capacity to network. And as you build your capacity to network, you have to learn how to forgive because somebody is going to hurt you, right? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. All right? All right. Well, that's it. Thank y'all so much for coming. Um, leaders, I'm, I appreciate you coming. Again, not forcing you to come. If you need to watch online, that's fine because I know this is still in, 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 in risky times, but I just want you to hear my heart. And so what I'm telling you as leaders, you're going to have to learn how to take the pain. Some people are going to misunderstand you. Some people are going to get upset because you're the leader and they're not. Some people don't want to play number two. Do you know sometimes when I played the saxophone, and sometimes even though I was first chair, if somebody didn't understand how to play the second part, sometimes I would have to play the second part because sometimes that's harder than the first part because the, the, the melody, the harmony a lot of times is easier. It's hard to play second fiddle. Ooh. And sometimes people don't want to play second to you. So why am I speaking to my leaders? Because although you are a servant leader, although you, you're under the headship of Newbies Grove and the pastor, some people are upset because you have been elevated. Some people are upset because you're in a position they felt like they're supposed to be in. But some people can't be elevated because if you want the position for the position and you don't want the position to make a difference, then you don't need to be there right now. Amen? All right, I love you all. I'm going to pray us out of here. Thank you all so much. Thank you, prayer team, for setting the atmosphere. Thank you, praise team, for setting the atmosphere. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, camera people. Thank you, LED screen. Thank you, social media sound. Thank all of you all for what you do to make this possible. Thank you all here for just coming. Lord, we thank you for your power and grace. Please, 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 Lord, elevate us. Bless us. Mature us so that we can do what it is you need us to do. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you so much. Hallelujah.